Hey, how's everybody doing today? I hope you all been staying safe and taking care of yourself out there. And good to see you again, as always. Today, we're going to do a couple of little vases. And uh, I'll, uh, through the course of the video, you'll know why I called this Everything Went Wrong. Because it did. <laughs> it happens a lot. Uh, especially for me, trial and error, live and learn, and all that good stuff. But we're going to make a couple of vases uh, using some resin and some walnut. Walnut. <laughs> I tell you, I'm going to die before I learn to speak right. Some walnut and some ambrosia maple. Uh, two very nice woods. Going to mix them up with some resin and do a little intricate cutting and inlaying not too intricate just creating a pattern with the wood and the resin so let's get at it and see how it comes out hey guys okay we got these two boxes already made they're made out of some scrap mdf i had uh six inches by 11 and a half inches and before i nailed them together i lined all the pieces with some packing tape so let's get started on setting up our turnings in there for these two turnings we're going to be doing, we're going to be using ambrosia maple, which is on the left, and walnut, which is on the right. Okay guys, I've stacked my pieces so that the grain stayed oriented. When I cut them to be put together, I want the grain to stay lined up. Y'all might have noticed when I was cutting them, I was getting some tear out on the back. If that was a problem, was going to be a problem, I would have put a scrap piece of wood in the back so I didn't get tear out. But in this case, I'm not worried about it. The tear out's not going to be an issue. Okay, y'all, how you doing? Did you get yourself a snack and go to the restroom? All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to glue all these together before I put them in the mold for the resin. And uh, a simple 45, the easiest way to do that, I'll go ahead and do one on the camera here for y'all so you can see it. And then I'll get the rest done off camera. This plain masking tape it's like a built-in stretcher, man. You touch it down on one side and stretch it, and it is going to pull them seams together for you just as tight and pretty as can be. And I hope you all can see that. Let's see here. Touch it down on one end. Give it a yank. I'm pulling pretty hard, and it when you pull it on it like that, it doesn't tend to break. As easy as you can tear this stuff, and as flimsy as it is, it really holds up pretty well to being stretched like this. And what that's going to do, when I put my glue, it's going to close up and make that a perfect miter and hold it right in place for me. You've probably seen that before, but if you haven't, now we need to put some mustard in there. Not too much. These are just being held together so they can be put into a mold. Give it a little ooze. And then I'm gonna put another piece of tape and do the same thing to act as a corner clamp. And when I pull on that tape, like so, nice and tight, that miter ain't going nowhere except together. Get it stuck on one end first. Hold your object pretty firm. Stretch that tape. Come down. Nice, tight, clamped up. Gonna set them aside, let them dry. 
get them all clamped up here for you guys then I'll show you yeah no more tape no more tape we gotta take off the tape can't have tape can't have tape we gotta take off the tape okay guys here it is sorry about the interruptions there really am between my bad talking and the little boy's room and the camera not getting in the right place but I gotta do the other one like this now and I'll show you all that one as soon as I get it ready it's the same process I'm gonna lay them in and space them out evenly then work out the last little pieces um, I'm doing about a six inch by six inch casting here and it's kind of hard to get to the bottom of that when you're working in these tight of spaces. So let me get the other one done real quick. Okay guys, here they both are ready to go. Time to put some resin in there. Okay guys, we're going to mix up our resin today. We're using liquid glass, which is a uh, two to one mixture. You put two parts of the resin part A to one part of the resin part B, or simple terms, two cups of part A, one cup of part B. So let me go ahead and get that mixed up and I'll be right back to you guys. Okay guys, I've got 64 ounces of part A, 32 ounces of part B. I'm horrible at math, but that sounds right. If I made any oops in that calculation, you guys let me know. I don't think so, but you never know. Got to get it all poured in there. In case any of y'all wonder, a few of y'all have made comments. I don't wear a new shirt every time I pour resin. I tried that once, it got too expensive. So I have four shirts that I keep in the shop and keep them clean, get them washed. And when they wear out, I replace them. Let's see what we can do here. Thought I had that thing pinned in there pretty good. Guess I didn't. Do now. Anybody else being a problem? Nah, I tell you what, we're gonna just for kicks, just because a little more. You always run into some little situation you got to deal with. That's okay. We can deal with it. There we go. No more issues there. Okay guys, I had a little extra resin actually way too much extra resin this time so I'm gonna pour them up in the cups and put them in the pressure pot so I can use them for some turnings later okay guys I'm gonna go ahead and get this one mixed up unless y'all wanna watch me do the same thing again and while I'm at it which I'm no I think I'll save for later y'all saw me put these together 
a while, a few little while ago. Um, and I'll probably pour those tomorrow, I think. I've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six of them there with some burr in them. And I'm waiting on some uh, diamond flake powder. Well, that's what they call it. It's probably glass or, or resin that I got ordered to come in. I want to put in some of these. Messy, messy, messy. What a shame. One of my brother's oldest daughter is getting married. So she wanted these cubicles made for her centerpiece. It's kind of real rustic looking. So what they are is some walnut that we ripped up. And he nailed them all together. And then took a ebony stain and rubbed on them. Uh, didn't do any sanding. Didn't do any miter joints. Wasn't going for that look. Just these rustic looking cubes to sit in the center of the table. So my brother's in here doing this this week. And number two. Hope I didn't have a leak on that one. Let's see. That's why I put that paper in there. Remember, just in case. Yep. I don't know if I had a leak. Or if it just filled itself in. But y'all can probably see it dropped down a little bit. So we're going to have to fill them up. Alright, let's take a look here. No. It wasn't a leak. We had a little bit, but must have just filled in the gaps. But it's sure looking good at the moment. This one did have a little bit of a leak, and I mean a little bit, but nothing to create that much drop. So, we're going to have to fill them up. I don't know if y'all can see this, but got a little bit of a problem. That one piece right here rose on me. And I had them glued on the top and glued on the bottom as far as I could reach in there. And you saw when I was casting them, I had a hole down on that first one. But that circle went and rose on me, which threw it on an angle. Which basically ruined the turning, about one third of the turning. So, uh, let's see what I can figure out here. Alright guys, I made several mistakes here. I know I'm good looking, but I do make mistakes. What can I say? First off, I had that one piece of walnut rise on me in here. Second off, I... Didn't, I filled it with resin, but I got that shrinkage. And this is the first time I've used liquid glass, so I don't know if that's my culprit here. I'm not that familiar with liquid glass. I didn't have enough bubbles in it to cause this much shrinkage. Although, um, I did have them quite high in the pressure pot, almost up to 80 pounds, which assured me there'd be no bubbles in it when it came out, but I shouldn't have gotten this kind of shrinkage. So I didn't have any leaks per se. I thought I did at first, but I really didn't. So I don't know why. But anyway, I'm going to try and salvage it. I'm going to have to cut about one third off of the walnut turning here and just use the top portion. And on uh, what I'm going to do is they were cast at six inches by six inches. I'll have to wind up cutting them down to four and a half by four and a half because I have to maintain the center. If I don't maintain the perfect center going through, the turning won't look correctly. It'll be off, which, trust me, I've done that mistake too, all right? This one got the same shrinkage. This one did have a little bit of leakage. I mean less than an ounce, but I honestly don't know why I got that much shrinkage on it. There's no way I'm ever going to pour more resin back on top of this. That was my first thought. Just pour more resin. It won't match. 
there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Every time you mix up a resin with some dye, it's a one of a kind. It's almost impossible to come back to the same color. You can get close. You can get real close. But this is kind of a dark purple. If it was a little lighter in color, I might give it a try. But that dark, it's not going to work. You'd see it. So I'm just going to cut it all off once I demold it and make them a little smaller. So let me take a break here for a second. God, guys, just can't seem to solve this problem. Shop always gets dirty. What do you do? You clean it. I cut the corners off at the table saw. Here's why. Two more really cool turning blocks. I don't know if I've got the angles all right right now. I just slapped them together. I haven't glued them up yet so y'all could see. Let's see here. Yeah, squeeze them together a little bit better. There we go. Two more turning blanks. Compliments of what would have become scrap. Alright, I hope y'all can see this okay. The cutoffs off of the band saw. Since I had to take one that inch off that one side, I got a four half inch pieces, two off of each other side. I'm gonna saturate the wood with some CNA, cut out some spoons. Pretty little spoons. Can y'all believe how dirty a shop can get? My God. Unbelievable, huh? I should have made my shop tour when it looked like this. Oh my God, guys. As soon as I turned the camera off, disaster struck. And it broke. Oh. Let me see what I can do. Oh my gosh. Okay, I cut the broken end off of it. Yep, we still got us nine inches of turning. What can you say? It happens. Let's get back at it and see what we can do. Alright guys, let's see if we can salvage this thing. 
what these are guys are long pieces of sanding belts that break which they do quite often long before they wear out so I cut them up into strips and save the pieces use them for sanding on the lathe and other things let's get out of here Hey y'all, want to give you a quick sneak peek of an upcoming video project I'm working on, but I ain't gonna tell you what it is yet. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm Buck. Uh, like I told you, a lot of screw-ups and mistakes there going on. Uh, number one, y'all remember that Little Mermaid video that I was doing in two parts? Well, uh, it didn't go well either. I filmed turning them, but I made the resin way too dark. It just distorted the entire Little Mermaid inside of it. And I made them a little too shallow. I mean, her head is just right there on the top. And if you look real close on the sides, I was too tight inside the pipe. So just mistake after mistake. That's why I didn't put another video out on them. They just didn't come out well. Resin cast way too dark. This one would have been real nice if the resin hadn't come out too dark. But if you look real close here, and I hope y'all can see it, again, even without having to do any turning, just basic sanding, since I poured it in a round mole, and I hit the little tip of her hand there and poured the resin too dark so learning experience what can I say that's why I didn't make another video on them on our vases that we doing, did today I used liquid glass resin first time I've used it and overall the product looks good until you start pointing out the flaws 
look here real close in the top you see that crack in there it's all glued up and secured it didn't break it just had that crack in it so did this tip over here and then there's one other one let me find it oh yeah right down here and if you remember the wood moved on me so it goofed up my pattern my spacing isn't even all the way through although I'm very very happy with the concept you can see the actual arch of the wood you can see the shadowing from the inside of the wood as it's going down on the angle which gave a very nice effect maybe that'll show better than on my big head behind it huh yeah, can you all see that yeah see the shadowing effect that all worked out nicely the wood looks beautiful just overall the thing the vase has some cracks in it and uneven spacing and on the walnut one same thing overall I'm very happy with the pattern had to lose a lot of the mold because of that movement and that movement threw off my spacing on it meh it's okay that's all I can say for it it's okay nothing too great it all went wrong but we salvaged what we can hope y'all enjoyed that hope you can avoid the mistakes I made if you see this little thing sitting here behind me that is uh, gonna be the head of a peacock I've cut it out on the bandsaw glue glued it up cut it out on the bandsaw and now I've got to get start carving it it's going to be part of a video that I'm working on here so hope y'all enjoyed that I got to get back to work making videos for you y'all be safe and guys if you're new and you subscribe or even if you've subscribed before leave a message please and let me know so I can thank you there's there's no other way I can respond back to you that I can figure out even when I go through my subscriber list and click on you um, there's no way to leave a comment if there's not a video there or something and I like to tell everybody thank you so if you subscribe and I hope you do I'm gonna keep this up for a few more days <laughs> leave a comment and let me know okay thanks y'all be safe now bye bye and you know huh I'll be back <laughs>